Year of the Hibigon, 1972. Hibigon, Japanese Bigfoot. Now these beings have been known and recorded here by various names for centuries. But there was a space of years when some of them seemed to become a little bit bolder or less disciplined or less comfortable in their environment and they allowed themselves to be seen by dozens and dozens of people here in Hiroshima Prefecture. And I have an idea why, but that's another video. This is the year in review for 1972. April 2nd, 1972, S.K., 16 years old, finds footprints in Jinseki again. One creature was spotted here the previous year, hanging around a cherry tree. And this is somewhat personal to me. My wife's family is here. And two years ago, I found a Hebegon stick structure here, deep in the woods, off trail. Now, these prints were 18 centimeters long. This is clearly a juvenile. And most of these sightings and footprints are from juveniles, very clearly. May 24th, witness M.M., 41 years old, sees Hibigon on the side of a mountain, here again in the Jinseki Highlands. M.M. estimated it was 160 centimeters tall. It was covered with dark hair, and it was walking sideways. What an interesting detail. Well, there are places on mountains where I walk sideways on account of I'm fat and weak and afraid of heights. But I'm not sure that any of this pertains to a juvenile Hebegon. I wonder if he was swaying side to side. Or maybe he stepped sideways to get behind a tree. Maybe he was doing a little lateral tree peeking. I love my friend Mr. Eggy, the ape clerk, responsible for documenting all of this. I will always defend him and praise him for doing a good job where no government anywhere has done as much to record Bigfoot Sasquatch movements and make them public. Show me any public servant anywhere in the world who's done anything like this. He and his colleagues did a real good job despite being unprepared untrained and uninformed. Yet, if we could have a, a, a do-over, yeah, I would ask him to press for more details. But, then again, these Japanese mountain people are not the most talkative characters. How well do I know that? But, uh, yes. As you do, I'm sure, I also wish that we had more details. Now, all through the summer of 1972, Kobe University's investigative research team was here. They spent the whole summer here. Now, Kobe University is ranked 15th in Japan. To compare, 15th place in the States is Columbia. So this is a pretty good school. They're not just a bunch of dumb, snowbilly varmint hunters like me. They came up here as skeptics, and they left as believers. 
citing the physical evidence, the excellent quality and consistency of the eyewitness testimonies, and, quote, the genuine inimitable fear displayed by the eyewitnesses, end quote. Something that I can relate to, having felt, yeah, true fear on my failed foray to the solar calendar vertex. And I agree, fear like that cannot be imitated. It can't even be imagined until it is felt. August 14th, 1972, T.K., 23 years old, is leading a troop of Boy Scouts. Yes, they have Boy Scouts in Japan. Now, the Scouts found a track of footprints and followed it for one and a half kilometers. That's very almost a mile. This was in the prefectural forest on the back side, the whole north side of Mount Hiba. That's where we climbed Mount Hiba last year, last November. These prints were 25 centimeters long, so that's a quite bigger creature, uh, possibly even a mature female. November 7th, witness R.I., 26 years old, sees Hibigon in Hiwacho Mitsugaichi. That is on the western slope of Mount Hiba, right where our colossal solar calendar is located. Now, he said that the creature looked like a gorilla. It was covered with black hair. And it had black eyes. Boy, I, w I have to wonder how close our eye was. And here is a key detail. He said that the creature was trampling trees. We've seen quite a few reports now of he begun trampling grass, trampling trees, trampling corn. And November 29th, witness T.I., 35 years old, finds footprints east of Mount Heba, on the other side of the mountain, near the Rakunohara River. Well, well, well. Look at this. He begun protection area. And you know that the greatest concentration of sightings was here, along this road and river. He followed this track for 700 meters. That was awfully brave of you, T.I. I don't think I'd have the stomach to do that. I know I wouldn't. These prints were 16 centimeters, so we're back to a very young juvenile who's I'm sure he's gotten out of his crib, out of the nursery, and he's gone wandering where he ought not. Naughty Hebegon. That's a bad, bad Hebegon. And that is the year in review, 1972. More on this megalith that I found on Mount Zhao. Uh, I think it is a New Year stone, all set to light up at sunrise on the ancient New Year Day, which is next week, next Friday. I told my wife I was thinking of climbing up there next Friday morning, and she reminded me I have care of our younger daughter that morning. I got, I got so excited about this megalith, I forgot about my daughter. So next Friday is out. However, my sun table tells me that sunrise will be at the same 109 degrees for three days, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. 
So I'm thinking of going up there next Saturday morning. It's maybe Friday would be better, but Saturday morning is still 109 degrees. I don't know how super duper precise this machine is, but I don't think one day will make a, a great difference. If I start around 4 a.m., I should be able to get in place well before sunrise, get the camera set up and point it on the rock and start recording video maybe, I don't know, half an hour before sun up. I suggested to the wife that the girls could sleep over at Grandma's and then she could come with me, but she reminded me that our elder daughter has school on Saturday morning. So I'm going to see if I can find a friend who wants to climb a, a mountain in the dark, in the cold, to go see an old rock with me. I'll let you know. Okay, I'm Kyle, the old varmint hunter behind Hibigon, Japanese Bigfoot. Your world authority on all things Hibigon. Amateur megalith enthusiast. And, some want to insist, the world's best photoshopper. Speaking of which, from the mailbag, Studio Lunarist says... I'm pretty good with Photoshop myself, and since this subject was brought to my attention, I have looked over the photos a lot. I think the human mind is immediately drawn to seek out fraudulent things, especially when it doesn't fit their own narrative, and even more so when it comes to legendary discoveries of mythical descent. But I can honestly say... I don't see anything artificial in the photos. Although they aren't crystalline quality, that doesn't matter. It's a beat-up, hollowed-out corpse of something not humanly registered in the animal kingdom thus far. Well, Alex, uh, maybe you're not quite as good with Photoshop as you say you are. Maybe I am. The Photoshop genius of Photoshop geniuses. Or, yes, maybe these photos are real. Smorgasbrod, doing extra study for extra credit, reports that in 18... No, I'm sorry. In 1685, astronomer Shibukawa Shunkai rewrote the 24-season Chinese calendar and it became 72 seasons, which recognizes the constant movement of the natural world. Imagine the undertaking of spending an entire year noting plants, insects, birds, weather, etc. I wonder what things Shibukawa-san observed that he did not include in his calendar. New stick structures appear. Bark stripped from trees higher than a man can reach now. Corn plants become flattened. We can only contemplate. Sigh. Smorgasbrod will never see Shibukawa's first draft. It might have gone something like that. And some of the Edo courtiers might have laughed him to scorn and called him a bald-faced liar and photoshopper. We'll never know for sure. All right, thank you, everybody. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.